Welcome to another ESI training video. Um, today what we're going to do is on a GX control valve, we're going to change the fail mode. I have a demo model here, which is fail closed. So we're going to change it to a fail open. So what we're actually going to do, I'll just show you from this picture here, all these springs here and the diaphragm, everything is going to be flipped over and changed upside down so that on fail mode, the valve is open. Um, we're going to change the route of the air from going through the oak here up into the bottom. Uh, we're going to take it off the positioner and bring it round to the top and put our vent here in at the back to allow the air from the bottom uh, to vent off. From the outset, I would advise that you download the IOM, follow the safety instructions, and the cautions um, uh, as you're going through the job. Uh, there is spring pressure inside in the casing here, so you need to be careful of that. Okay, so we're going to begin with uh, loosening the bolts on the top of the actuator plate here. Uh, if you take note here, two of the two of the, uh, the bolts have extended threads. These are to release the pressure slowly from the springs inside in the casing. So the first four bolts to come off will be these four. So I'm going to loosen these now and these two and uh, we'll see where we are from there then. Okay, now I've removed the four bolts and I've slackened off the two extended ones so that the pressure on the springs inside have been taken off. You can see they're quite loose there, there's no pressure on them. It also helps to put a bit of grease as well on the, on the treads on the extended ones just to make things a bit easier. Take off the plate and here are our springs. So remove the springs and we're left with the, the holder for the springs, the diaphragm plate and the diaphragm. We have a central bolt here that's tightened through the actuator stem connected to a stem connector which connects to the bottom of the valve here. So we don't really have to do anything here. We can leave that alone. Um, we loosen our bolt. That's it. Let's take this off. Take this out. Here's a diaphragm. Underneath our diaphragm, we have a bit of a guide here that locks into the diaphragm and seals it um, from the atmospheric side. Now, also on the diaphragm plate here is an O-ring onto the bolt. Uh, we'll have to move that over to the other side as well when we're at reassembling. So now I've uh, taken the bolt for the, the plate and diaphragm assembly screwed it into our uh, actuator stem. I've slacking the packing nut down here to take the pressure off the valve and I pull the valve fully open. Next. I place the springs on the plate here equally all around. Put my plate upside down, making sure that all the springs are settled in. This can be a bit fiddly. Okay, we've got our springs back in place. We have a collar in here. And then we place the bolt down through the center, through the plate and through the collar and directly onto the stem. Okay, we have a bolt tightened down, uh, everything in place here. If we look at our valve now, we turn this around, you can see the colorway. You can see the valve is now in a fully open position as against the fully closed position when we started. So we're going to replace 
our, our uh, diaphragm plate back on top. We're going to stick our bolts back in now and tighten these up. Okay, we've put all our bolts back on. We've assembled our actuator. So on the actuator side, really, uh, we're more or less finished. Our next job is now that we've changed the action, we need to change the air input into the actuator from the bottom into the top. So in order to do that, we remove the vent here. Okay, so we've removed the vent from the top. We'll be piping into the top here, coming out of the positioner here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to blank off here, isolate where the air is coming through the positioner into the oak and up underneath here. So we're going to remove the positioner and we're going to blank off the end of the positioner. And then from the outside here, we're going to come off and we're going to pipe it into the top. And also on the back here, and this connection here, we're going to remove that connection and put a vent in so we can vent off the bottom of the actuator, okay? So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, next we're going to remove the positioner. There's a little entry key. There's three anchor bolts here. So that's our positioner removed. As you can see, linkage of this positioner. This is our magnet, which provides the feedback through these two Hall effect sensors here. That gives us our, our positioning. Here we have the uh, output of the positioner, which goes through here and up in underneath. We need to blank this off now um, so that the air doesn't pass through this way anymore. Um, so I'm going to put a plug in this now uh, to prevent that from happening. Right, um, I'm going to put a plug here now, back of this, so, 38 NPT, quarter NPT I should say, sorry. Right, I've removed the plug on the outside here so that we can pipe that up. Uh, there's no longer any need for that O-ring. Uh, as if we've it blanked off and it's actually going to be vented. So we just need to refit our positioner. Right. Next, move around to the back here. And this is where our new vent is going to be. So we're going to remove this plug. Okay, after we've removed our plug, this is going to be our new vent for the bottom half of the actuator. So I'm going to put our, back in our little plastic vent here. Just go hand tight. Now, okay, so we're all set. The next thing to do now is we need to repipe from our positioner here out onto the top of the actuator. So I'm going to do that now and then I'll come back. Uh, we've put some power to the positioner and we've put on our air. So now we need to look at the face on the positioner which shows us the LED readout shows us four milliamps and zero travel. Because we've changed the fail mode now, it should read four milliamps with 100% travel because the valve is fully open. So we need to change that. So what we do is we scroll down through the menu and we go to detail setup Enter details setup. Zero travel control signal, so the valve is fully open at that. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Pressure units is okay. Now the output range, four milliamps to 20 milliamps, that's okay, it's linear. Uh, and we press and save. Okay, so now we need to uh, 
just check and make sure that the valve is okay. And then we've changed. It's four milliamps to 100 milliamps. So just to be on the safe side, we will uh, perform a calibration. So we go down one, we see quick setup, enter quick setup, press and hold the button for three seconds, and it's going into a, a smart mode uh, calibration. Just gonna test that now, way up it by 25%. So we should be at 75, yeah. At 8 milliamps, 12 milliamps should be roughly 50%. Yeah, it's 49.8.7, that's acceptable. And 3 quarters, 75%, or 25%. And um, we're at 24.4. And at 20 milliamps, we're fully closed. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's how you do a fail mode change on a, a GX control valve. I hope you find the uh, video um, interesting. Um, thank you again for visiting the ESI Technologies website.